What we're going to be going over here is a cost volume profit graph where we're going to be calculating the safety margin. So on our graph here, I'm going to show along our y-axis, that's going to be our dollar amount, and then along our x-axis is going to be our quantities or our sales quantities. And what I'm showing here in the brown dotted line, that's going to be our revenues line. And then we're going to have three different costing lines here, which each have a different variable cost. And associated with them, there's going to be a different fixed cost. And what we're attempting to do here to determine uh, the, what they call the safety margin percentage or safety margin dollars, we have to determine our budgeted revenue or some actual revenues that we'd be looking at. And then based on these different cost options here, that's where your cost equals your revenue, you're going to have some break-even point. Based on that break-even point, you can calculate the break-even revenues. And then this is where that safety percentage or that safety margin percentage comes into play. This is where the safety margin here is really the amount by which this budgeted or the actual revenues here exceed our break-even revenues. And you can also look at it in terms of how much can your, you go below budget here in revenue before you start experience a loss. And that would be at your break-even revenues. So what, the first thing we have to do is we have to calculate our break-even points here on our very various costing options and we also let's look at let's and okay we'll look at those numbers but before we get into that for our break our budgeted revenues I'm just going up our revenues line and we look at it we have fifty dollars here per unit uh, sales uh, per sales uh, the sales price for each unit is fifty dollars and we're going to be looking at that uh, budgeted amount here of a quantity of 170 so 50 times 170 is going to give us a budgeted revenue of eight thousand five hundred dollars now we can we're going to look at these different break-even points for each of those costing lines and our numbers here for our different options option c is 34 dollars per unit here cost b is 36 dollars and option a here is 30 dollars and associated with those are our fixed costs here uh, for option B, it's $1,000, and then for option A and C, $2,000 fixed cost. So we need those numbers here to determine our break-even point. All right, so what, and then the other thing is here, just remember uh, this, I'm using this slope-intercept form here to determine those break-even points. That's where is our Y, our dollars here equals M. The slope is really those per unit costs and per unit revenues here times whatever quantity we have and then we have to in the case here of our cost we have to add in those fixed cost okay so that's what we're going to be working off here okay so those are the numbers now let's go and let's calculate these break-even points so again those break-even points that's where your revenues equal your cost and those would be the break-even points again we're using this y equals mx plus b line formula so for our revenues here that was that $50 here per unit of sales. That's in for our option A here, we had that $30 variable cost plus the $2,000 fixed cost. So solving for X, 50 times X, whatever quantity we have here, equals 30 times X plus the $2,000 fixed cost. Solving for X, uh, 20X equals 2,000 here moving your 30x over to this side of the equation. So solving for x, divide each, each side here by 20, your x equals 100, a quantity of 100 for the break-even point. So for option A on our graph here, that break-even point is going to be 100 units of sales. And the same here for uh, option B. Again, we'd have our uh, revenues here at 50, 50x, our co variable cost with 36 times X plus $1,000 here in fixed cost. So solving for X, well, 36 from 50 is, gives us 14X. That's going to equal $1,000. So the division here gives us X equals 71 here. So we have, for our option B, we have a break-even quantity here or a break-even point here in quantity at 71. And then for option C, again, our 50X here being our, our revenues, equals 34, that's our variable cost here, 34x plus 2,000 uh, for our fixed cost here. So solving for x, 16x here is going to equal 2,000. So the division gives us x equals a break-even point here of 125 units. So for 
Option C here, we have a break-even quantity of 125 units. So I'm going to be looking just at option A here to determine that, go through the numbers here for that safety margin percentage here. But we, you would have to do the same thing here for option C and B, looking at your dip. You looking at your different options. I'm showing three different options here. I could have gone just through one here to determine, uh, looking at how you determine those uh, safety margin percentage. But just looking at three just to see how the difference here in fixed costs and quantities that you've sold here, are co fixed costs and, uh, excuse me, your variable cost per unit here can affect your different break-even points. That's really what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is how, looking at option A here to calculate that safety margin. This is where you take your budgeted dollars, that is what? That was our selling price here, $50 per unit, times 170 units were budgeted to sell here. So that's going to give us that $8,500 that we calculated before. Now our budgeted break-even revenues, again, this is where we go to that break-even point. We calculated that here for option A to be 100. We needed a quantity of 100 here at our break-even point. So plugging that in here, again, $50 per unit times 100, a quantity of 100, that's going to give us a break-even revenue here of $5,000. So a break-even point here, 100 units uh, at quantity uh, for A here, we're going to have a break-even revenue of $5,000. So just subtracting that here from our budgeted revenue of 8500 that we have here, subtract our 5000 here of our break-even revenue, that's going to give us safety margin here in dollars of $3,500. So what we're just saying is we can go down here in revenue, uh, decrease here up by $3,500 before we hit that break-even point. So that's what we're saying here. So our safety margin in dollars is $3,500. We can go down from 8,500 down as much as 3,500 before we reach that. Oh, at that that point we'd reach the 5,000 here, and that's the break-even point here. That's where our revenues equal our costs. Anything below that, then our costs would be greater than our revenues, and we'd be at a loss. Okay, so for our safety margin percentage, I look at it in terms of a percentage. You take that safety margin here, that 3,500 dollars that you calculated and you divide it by the budgeted revenues here of $8,500. So that's, in this case, it's going to give us a 41%. So this is really the percent of revenue that you can decrease here before you have a loss. Or, and that's, that's our option A. At this break-even point, that safety margin percentage here was 41%. You can also, and that's really looking at the case here, this is the amount that the uh, budgeter actual revenues here exceeds our, our break-even revenue. So that's, you can look at it in those terms too. Okay, so that we did here for option A. You do the same here for option C, go through the same uh, arithmetic here for really option C and B. And I've already done that here. And for option B, we have a safety margin of 60% because our break-even point here is uh, much less here. We, are, we only have to sell 71, uh, 71 units of B here and it has sort of a re uh, pretty close uh, variable cost here and it also has that thousand dollar fixed cost. So you got to look at all those numbers here when you look at that break-even point, your fixed cost, your variable cost, and then you can determine your break-even revenues that we did here. So option B, we have a break-even point here is 71. And for, and I did, I said that safety margin after we went through and we did our, all our calculating our, with the dollars and that, it would have come up to 60% here versus the 41% here for A. And then for option C, I did the same thing. We have a safety uh, margin percentage here of 26%. That's based on that larger break even quantity here of 125, which also included that $2,000 here in fixed cost and what we had here for variable cost was $34. That's why we went through those numbers here to calculate those break-even points. Okay, so you can see using these different options here, you really have different uh, margins of safety or the safety percentage. So for uh, option C here, you can only, that only, option C here, uh, the break-even revenue here 
or your budgeted revenue is only 20%, 26% greater than your break-even revenue, and you can only go down by 26% here from your budgeted revenue before you're going to have any, uh, before you'd have a loss. And then for option B here, uh, that 60%. Uh, safety margin here is saying that the uh, break-even revenue here for B or our budgeted revenue here is 60% greater than our break-even revenue here for B. And I've got each one identified here in color-coded. B was that green line here, A is our blue line, and then C was the red line here. And we went through that here because of the fact that you want to look at it. You got these different costing options. Generally, they have different variable costs, and associated with them, you have different fixed costs. And we went through that, and we determined our break-even point here based on those fixed costs and those variable costs, and where they broke even here on our revenue line. So you can just follow your rev. If you're looking just at the graph alone here, you can follow your revenue lines up here, and where your cost line intersects with the revenue line that's where you have your break-even point just looking at looking at the graph alone here I know it's awful tight in here but that's how you'd be looking at it just visually here when you're going up through your graph and then the other thing is here we want to make the point here for example we had that budgeted here of 170 units say we moved up to 250 units here so all we're saying is if you move up you increase your sales quantity by uh, let's say in this case is substantial amount here you're going to also be increasing your safety margin percentage so you're going to have if you move up in sales quantity uh, over your budgeted amount here or in comparison to the other uh, break-even points here on your costing lines you're going to have a greater safety percentage so that's where your your break-even you have your break-even revenues or you have that greater percentage here between your actual revenues and those break-even revenues okay and if had we did it here looking at the two hundred and fifty dollar amount our safety margin would have been here we would have had what uh, for our um, safety margin dollars had we went down and calculated would have been seven thousand five hundred here that would have been our budgeted, it, that we, we'd have to put those numbers in here, uh, $50 here at $250, and then our break-even revenue at uh, looking at option A here times 100 quantity. And that's where we've got the safety margin uh, percentage here, or safety margin dollars up to $7,500. And then making our division here uh, by our budgeted revenues, that would have been $12,500 that we have. That's where we come up with our 60%. The only point is, if you move up in sales quantity here, you're going to also increase your sa uh, percentage or safety margin percentage. So you can, in this case here, the 60% is saying that our, uh, based on our uh, break-even point here for our option A here, our safety, our safety, our revenues here is 60% greater than our break-even revenues here for option A. Okay, so that's roughly how this graph would work here, but I've shown it here using three different options, costing options, just to show you with the three different fixed costs, associated fixed costs, just to show you how that uh, safety margin percentage here can increase. Okay, so that's about it for this graph here. All right, let's move over here. Just looking at, again, our cost, value, and profit graph here putting all this in perspective here just to make a point out of it, we went through and we calculated that higher we had that higher safety margin of safety here when we had those greater sales this is where you're going to have a less chance of a loss obviously and you're going to really put all this into perspective when you make these decisions you're going to have to look at your risk versus your return you know what that we calculated those safety margin percentage so the higher it is the less risk is concerned but you also have to be concerned with your various costs here so if you're operating in a range here let's look at it where you've got that costing line going up here and you're going to have your or excuse me you're going to have your revenues line going up here and then you have to look at your various costs 
uh, against those uh, that you have to look at it against those revenues we looked at those various break-even points here so if you're operating here with those higher fixed costs here option a and c at 2000 you're actually having a loss up to the point here uh, where you have that break-even quantity of 100 here for option A and option C, break-even point of 200 and 125 before you even make any start making any profit at all. And then with that option B here, uh, we, our break-even quantity was only 71. So we start making some profit here. So you're going to have to weigh your risk here against the returns here. So in this case, our return really, we look at it in these numbers, we don't really have... Uh, didn't have much here to change here in our variable costs and our con contribution margins changed somewhat here but this is the case here where you really have to look at your revenues versus your different costs here so you can see that red line here or that was at $34 or $16 per unit here for contribution margin here you're making less of a profit here than you are with the blue line here where you had the contribution margin of $20 here and if uh, $20 per unit we didn't look at those contribution margin but that's really the difference between your selling price here and your variable costs on a per unit basis and then you had to look at how make that comparison here this is where you get the greater return now remember here with that both a and C here we had that higher fixed cost so we had to cover those before we start making any revenues so if we just look at it you want to lay it out this way you want to look at all your risks here on uh, chances of losses and those break-even points but then looking at your return uh, I'm just showing it here I have taken that revenue of 50 and looking at a quantity here of 250 where we got the higher sales fifty dollars a piece here revenue times 250 is going to give us twelve thousand five hundred dollars and then just look taking those variable costs here uh, thirty dollars thirty six dollars and thirty four for a B and C times that two hundred and fifty uh, quantity that were sold plus we have to add in our uh, fixed cost here for each of those a 2000 B here was a thousand and then C was also two thousand adding those in we would have come up with the uh, revenue or the cost here of nine thousand five hundred take that from our revenue of twelve thousand five hundred so for a we would have had three thousand here in operating income B uh, doing the same thing here ten thousand in our cost 12 from 12,500 revenues is going to give us 2,500 here in our operating income and then for C we had a 10,500 here in cost subtract that from our revenues at 12,500 is going to give us 2,000 here in operating income so that's about how you'd go through uh, trying to make an, an assessment here based on those different break-even points and those different uh, the safety margins that we're looking at versus uh, your return over here your different returns and then you'd have to really compare those uh, different alternatives so you can see here for option a uh, you're only earning op operating income here of three thousand versus option c which had the lowest option here of two thousand or two thousand here in operating income and b was sort of a mid-range here at twenty five hundred not a great deal of change here in your operating income because uh, and then you uh, because your variable costs weren't that great here and fixed cost was somewhat different on this end but you go about laying it out here in your cost volume profit graph making uh, not only looking at the safety margin percentage but also looking at your costing as you move up and down the line here and just remember this go through it here one more time here just to make a point here just the safety margin is the amount by which the budgeted or actual revenues exceed your break-even revenues so that's what you'd be looking at here just so you understand that's what we really were looking at in this uh, problem here but along with it here when you're t you want to look at that safety margin you also want to look at your risks here uh, versus your rewards okay so that'll summarize our topic